The minority in parliament is assuring that the right to information bill, which the sixth parliament failed to pass into law, will be passed once it takes over as majority. The House, which rose on Friday night, will resume sitting on January 4, 2017, to hear President Mahama's final State of the Nation address. But there's no way it can conclude work on the bill before dissolution on the 6th of January. Well, the next parliament would have to begin work on the bill from scratch. MPP MP for Finsa South and the Vice Chairman of Parliament's Select Committee on Constitutional Affairs, Ben Abdullah, says President-elect Anado Nankwe Kufuado is committed to getting the bill passed as soon as possible. When the new parliament is sworn in, the new parliament will have to start all over again and then uh, ensure that that bill comes into being. We all know that the right to information bill is dear to the heart of a lot of people. It's dear to the heart of the new patriotic party because we all know Nana has been an advocate for a very long time for, uh, for human rights. Uh, the new patriotic party, in like the same way, uh, wants this bill passed as quickly as possible. But the blame is not to be put at the doorstep of the caucus parliament. I'll put the blame squarely at the doorstep of the majority caucus in parliament. That's what I was driving at. So what went wrong? Because all along we thought there was firm because commitment on the part of both sides to get this out. Uh, 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 what we know is that, and that is a fact, business in parliament is generated by the majority caucus in parliament. The business of the day is determined by the majority caucus in parliament. So if the majority or the government was determined that this bill should pass, the bill should have been passed a long time ago. I believe that the government won this bill passed at the 11th hour because the government is just about to exit office. I think all along they've not shown the commitment to get it passed until the 11th. That's the way I will conclude. They haven't shown any commitment and seriousness or the willingness to have this bill passed into law as quickly as possible. If the willingness and the commitment were there, they should have done it a long time ago, but not now. And the anticipation is that the situation will be different once the two sides flip? you know, um, the power blocks? Yes, the, the situation will be different. Just as I've already uh, 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 alluded to the fact that MPP is willing to have this right to information bill passed into law as quickly as possible. So I am sure and I hope that as soon as Nana is sworn into office, as soon as the new members of parliament are sworn into office, one of the bills that we're going to tackle and to ensure that the bill comes into being or becomes a law is the right to information bill. Because the right to information bill is something that is going to touch at the heart of our democracy. And the MP for Subing Isaac Ose also says the majority side of the House did not show enough commitment to getting the bill passed throughout the four-year lifespan of the current parliament. Well, the truth of the matter, of course, is that the RTI bill was um, brought here in 1999 by, by the NPP uh, administration under President Kufo, and it's been modified in 2003, 2005, and finally we've got to this uh, uh, particular stage. The question one has to ask is uh, if it is so important uh, and it is government business, then we expect to see many more uh, people on the government uh, benches. We are ready to debate whatever issues are left and we are keen uh, on passing the right uh, to information uh, bill. So let no one make any mistake to think that the opposition does not want an RTI bill. After all, we crafted the first one. But the minority has in the majority side has made the point that following the threats by your, your leader, the Honorable Osei Chairman Sabuntu, that uh, if
consultations do not happen, then they may be forced to boycott further proceedings, including discussions on the ITI bill. Then it defeats the whole assumption that the minority side of the House are really committed to it. Well, the, 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 the point that has to be made really is that in this House, we try as much as possible to build consensus. Uh, no one can actually push anything down our throats. I mean, we've been pretty strong over the last four years, uh, even though government has usually won with their numbers. Away from the subject of governance, children in 20 communities in the Jirapa district of the Upper West region, in a petition to the Assembly, are calling for stiffer punishment for persons who defile or impregnate school children. According to them, school authorities who impregnate school children should have their certificates seized and made to face legal consequences as deterrent for others. The children made the call at a deba organized by the Ghana Education Service and other agencies to showcase the importance of education, especially for the girl child. We bring a report by Rafiq Salam. Tackling education needs inclusively, Tenny, implemented by the Ghana Education Service, and Pronet North with support from Voluntary Service Overseas VSO and Comic Relief seeks to achieve systemic change in basic education by promoting retention transition and completion of children, particularly girls and children with disabilities. The children accompanied by their parents, members of school management committees and teachers first went in a float around some principal streets of Graba to show to the residents the importance of girl child education. Executive Director of Pronet North, Martin Derry, elaborated on some of the feet chalked in implementing the program. We have helped to establish and strengthen 20 girls clubs in the 10, 20 schools and through the actions of these girls clubs some girls who were out of school who had dropped out for different reasons have come back into school and that is something that makes us very very happy and at any two also the girls have become more assertive graba district director of health phoebe balgunian to me noted that the proper development of the child is everyone's responsibility. She was therefore not happy about the increasing cases of teenage pregnancy in the district. In 2014, we had three people between the ages of 10 to 14 getting pregnant. And you wonder how these are going to deliver. Then 15 to 19, we had 287 in the Jirapa district. That formed 13% of the total pregnant women that we recorded. In 2015, five of them, between the ages of 10 to 14, got pregnant. And then for 15 to 19, 246, constituting 11%. 2016 is not ended, but we had two within the ages of 10 to 14 getting pregnant. And then 310 of them, that's 13.6, getting pregnant within the ages of 15 to 19. And as I speak, last year we lost three adolescents out of unsafe abortions. Two were actually in the senior high schools. One from Ulosek, the other from Wa, and then one from Heng. The children in a petition to the Graba District Assembly call for stiffer punishment for people who impregnate children. When a teacher or head teacher impregnate school girls, teacher or head teacher should be reported to the district directors who will set a committee to investigate the issue. If teacher or head teacher is found guilty, his certificate should be seized and prosecuted for court. Well, and they may not be the most sophisticated and luxurious means of transport. Neither are they your most spacious carriage trucks, but the predominantly yellow shoe size tricycles popularly known to those who tend to patronize them as Mahama Kambu in the Upper West region, uh, serve multiple purposes, while saving residents a lot more money and creating employment opportunities for scores of young people in the regional capital. Uh, well, the news reporter, Komla, I don't visit the area in our reports. The once popular motorbike is now playing second fiddle to the Mahama Kambu. <laughs> For 35-year-old Ibrahim, quitting his full-time job in Kumasi to settle here in the Upper West region meant he needed a source of sustainable income 
and the Mahama Kambu business provided a timely escape. While he continues to work as a teacher in the Upper West Regional Capital, he makes time for the transport business as well. So I try to look out for some opportunities. I realize that uh, you cannot just start anything without knowing what the benefits are. So I stayed here later, I came on, I saw that uh, over here, our means of transport is uh, this motorized car and then transport. So I decided to get one. I love doing some teaching with the remote primary school, which is in one place. And since teaching, you can still get some time after classes. I pick up this. So the taxis, yeah, most of them are negative. They are not good for habitation. But his energy and enthusiasm is what sets him apart. He tells me one can make between 1,800 and 2,000 Ghana cities monthly if they are keen. It's a market, you know what, you have uh, good and bad days. Mm -hmm. So depending on the day, this season in particular, because people have come down, they are moving all over the place. Uh, if you work very hard, at least you can get uh, uh, 130, 120 there about. And the fuel consumption to you is quite minimal. So when you buy the fuel and you are not speeding, you are just within the confines of the town. You are able to save maybe buy the fuel 25 to 30 cities. But in cases where you have to go around and move faster, you may buy four to one. Uh, four to one Ghana cities per day. So it depends on the day. And uh, you can even make more than 150 if you have a good day. So on the average, at the end of the month, how, how much are we looking at? Um, putting everything aside, if you are able to deny your fuel and other things, I for one, or many of us, pay 66. So if roughly you use 30 days, you'll be looking around 1,800. So if I is a good source of employment. People... According to folks in the community, social vices have drastically reduced since more youth are engaged in meaningful business. For commuters, they are comfortable with the Kambu as they say it is affordable as well. Actually, it's very comfortable. You know, as compared to um, the Trotro, it's very optimal that commuters should use it. One disadvantage of it is for the fact that, you know, it is open. During rainy season, uh, you find it difficult. But for now, it is optimal for commuters. It's very comfortable. And then when it comes to uh, the payment, too, it's very, very cheap. Yes, within town or within the central business districts, wherever you are going, it is one city. Okay. But if you are exceeding the central business districts, they are charging you based on the distance. But within the central business districts, you're going to pay only one city. The other side of the business boom is that dealers in the automobile are also cashing in. Abu is an automobile dealer at TA Tanko Company Limited. He tells me one can get a brand new Kambu with between 10,000 and 15,000, explaining what he sells is different from the ones for Maslock. Uh, not having what So when it came to me, a lot of people started buying them, and then now, as you can see, so many people are into, into it. You can see, as you can see, now we have about, about 200 or 300 in town. Yeah, so it came at the right time. And it has made the, I mean, the transportation in town is very affordable. If you want to go anywhere, if there's no taxi, if there's no truck driver, this one will take you anywhere you want to go. And uh, I mean, the full consumption is very low. Yeah, as to compare the taxi and uh, the truck driver. So if, maybe if you ask me, I'll take this one. The, Economical, if you enter it, you I mean, the, the fare that you pay, this is very cheap. He adds the motorbikes, which used to be the go to means of transport to the interiors of a region before 2008, are selling fast too. Right now, we have some from Maslock, and then we have some that we are selling. Also. Ours and the Maslock are, are not the same. Maslock, they have TBS, and we are having a judge. Okay. Yeah. 
So the, the ones you sell, if I have like 10,000, can I get Yeah, 10,000 I get. And then the mass lock one, I, 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 I see right at the moment, they don't have so at the moment. But those ones, if you have, yeah, people have like 3,000, they give you the, and then you time period. You have to pay. So how about the motorbikes? Are they now competing with the Mahama Kambus? And the ordinary motorbikes. Yeah, the ordinary motorbikes. Well, we cannot, it cannot compete with the Mahama Kambus because Mahama Kambus is just for town. Okay. And motors are in the villages. Mahama Kambus is the only town rider. It cannot be used for. It can go to the village, but if you start with it for village, it will not last. Because they didn't build it uh, for such a condition. So do you find people buying a lot of the motorbikes as compared to the Mahama Kambus or the other way around? People are buying the Mahama Kambus, right, but you cannot compare it with motorbikes. Motorbikes started coming around 2002. This one came just like 2006, so they are not the same. Like uh, 2006, sorry, so they are not the same. He, however, believes the licensing regime of these camboos need to be re looked at so that only qualified persons are permitted to ride them to prevent accidents. Losing a family member is a, is a painful experience, but it becomes even more agonizing to lose not one, but four members. This is the painful reality for 38-year-old Mauliado, who is living uh, on after he lost four people, including his 60-year-old mother and his 10-year-old nephew to the gas explosion that occurred at La here in Accra. Uh, my colleague Beatrice Adu spoke to a tearing Mauli who is now taking care of three other family members being treated for various degrees of bends after the incident at the hospital. The Thursday evening, around 6 that they going to Malata Market, going to La Paz, we had to drop one of our colleagues' staff. And she was in the car with me. And she told me, uh, someone sent her a message, uh, what's up? So through the water, he was checking, he said, they said there is a place burning nearby Labadi area. And I said, hey, it's a gas filling station. So when he narrated, she narrated the place to me, I thought, yeah, I know the place. So we were going, I went to drop her at home, coming back to home, before my, I had a call from my brother that the gas filling station that is burning is nearby my auntie's block factory. So my auntie and my mommy, with the children, all burned. So they've taken them to hospital. At, uh, some went to 37, and some they dispatched them to different hospitals. In the morning, we went again. They say our mommy passed over in the dawn for 12:45. So the three of them that were there at the Kolebu there, we put them in the fridge in the mortuary. So they are in the mortuary. Now we started moving around. Yesterday we went to 37 to take care of the children too. But the children, the three that's over there, for them, they, they are okay. How many of your family members were affected in this gas explosion? Uh, in, uh, my family members are six. And one of my f mother's friends, she too, she's from my mother's village, added making seven. And how many, unfortunately, have died? Four have died, left with three. And the four, they include your mom, your aunt and who again yeah my mommy's side the children's are from my mommy's side that's our brother's the children's and then my auntie my mommy was 60 years and your auntie my auntie is 67 years and the the child the two children the, the the twins are 10 years 10 years but one is passed over so left with one hmm. and then the girl is 14 years what about the three how are they doing now uh, actually, yesterday when we were there, they are okay. They are even talking. At first, they were not able to talk, and their eyes went, were, went off. But now they've opened their eyes, and then they, they, are, they are talking. Were their bands very extensive? Yes. You were saying that um, your auntie has the block factory at that gas station. And actually, that gas uh, s station, um, there is a training school between the gas station and the, the block factory. I actually saw that the day I was there. That's where um, your auntie, mom, and then the others were. Uh, what were they doing there at the time? Okay, my mommy lives at Achmota, but sometimes she used to go there and help my auntie. So she'll be there about one month now. Mm -hmm. 
Even she called us before the, this incident. She called us that she wanted to go back to the uh, Achimota so that whatever we has for her during the Christmas time, we'll bring to her there. So that is how it is. That was what your mom said? Yeah. And when, when was that? Okay, I've called my mommy. That was on the 17th of December. That mommy, we wanted to bring the your Christmas gift to you. And she said, well, she'll be going back to Achimota. So when the time reaches, she will call us and we'll just meet her there. So she didn't tell you specifically when she was leaving? No, please. But you spoke with her just less than a week before yes, this incident yes, happened? before this happened. How did you feel when you heard the news? In fact, I don't know, because in the family, it's not only one person. So in fact, I'm scared. I'm scared out. I don't know what to say, I don't know what to do, because I'm, I've never seen this thing before, I've never heard it before. In one house, seven people, I don't, I've never heard it before. So it's very terrible to me. When you first found your mom, after you had roomed, and you saw her in her condition, what was the first thing that came to your mind? The way we find our mommy condition, we spoke to her. He was responding, but she can't talk. When you talk to her, she will only shake her head. Then, so even my brother told me, I don't think, my brother is a prophet. So he told me, you don't think our mommy will survive. And I've told, her, I've told him, no, let's try, let's go, see, talk to the doctors. They should quickly look to her and see what best God can do to us. So we we're trying to gather ourselves to help. Pay every debt that maybe it will cost off for the drugs, but still our mommy is gone. Now, as she's also gone now, now I we have nobody again because if you know when our father died, we suffered until date. Like we wanted to protect our mommy so that she would be okay to us. Whenever God opened ways to us, we we'll take good care of her. But now she too, she's gone, less than two we can do again. What comes to your mind when you realize that a woman you cherish so much, your mom, had to die this way? Nothing, nothing like that. Nothing comes to my mind. And some of the stories, the tragic stories as fallout from that very incident, the gas explosion that was recorded near the trade fair site la, here in Accra. We'll bring you a lot more of such stories, but uh, it just happened prior to the holiday season, and many of you also have just been going on with life, and at the shopping malls, they seem to have become part of the latest holiday destinations in Accra. The traditional focus on beaches and amusement parks seem to have shifted to the malls in the city these days. Joy News' Zarina Mundi was at the Accra Mall to interact with some of um, the hundreds of young people and families who opted to spend their holidays there. The holidays have been long and fun for many people in the city, and many celebrants can't still get enough of the celebrations. The destinations for celebrations are many, but the latest addition okay, so that seemed to attract like more attention from young people is the Accra Mall. On my visit to the mall, I interacted with some patrons to find out what attracts them to spend the holiday at the mall. It was great and uh, thank God it fell on a Sunday so we went to church. Now we are out here, we are just trying to have some fun here. It was great. Everything is okay, you are feeling cool and everything. Like It's in the city, you have to have fun, that's all. No, everything is fine, I'm just being my friends, just chilling a little bit. But did you come here to shop or to see a movie? Or? Just to be with family and friends, that's all. Are you, are you having a good time? I'm, I'm having a very good time, yeah. Hello, Merry Christmas to you. Mm, same to you. So how, how has the day been? What are you here to, to do? Um, came something like um, a get-together, you know. It's a get-together you are come to have here. A class boys, like you just came to have fun. After his boxing day, what else do you want? So, so that's what came. Okay, so it's a, a, a school union? Yeah. So you're here to have fun and uh, meet your friends? Yeah, yeah, that's what you're about to do. I'm here with some friends so that we're having fun with us all. Okay, so what have, what have you been doing here? Are there any activities ongoing? Oh yeah, actually we were just taking some pictures and then also seeing new friends, meeting new people, then just socialising. Okay. 
Um, so, hello. So, how has, how has it been for you? What are you doing here? Um, we came to have some interview, like, interviews. <laughs> so, yeah, having some interviews with friends, like, new clothing lines that are out, new clicks that are out, and to meet with friends and just to chill. For some families, this is the time to go shopping and spend time with their loved ones. We are, we are. It's been nice. It's been nice. As you can see, my children are happy. <laughs> so hope to come here next time. Okay, so have you been shopping or did you come for an event or to see a movie? Oh, I just came to shop. You came to shop? Yes, yes. So, um, hello, how are you? Fine. What's your name? Caleb. What have you been doing here? We are going for shopping. You are going for shopping? Are you having fun? Yes. Okay, so did mommy and daddy get you something? Yes. Okay. Hi. <laughs> How are you? I'm fine. What have you been doing here? Shopping. Shopping. We are here to shop. Oh, okay. Uh, are you having a good time or are you just coming? Yeah. But then today, I, it looks as if there are a lot of people here. So I'm sure you come and blend in and join in the fun. Mm, kind of. <laughs> I think I hope you have a good time, sure, right? Oh, yeah. Hi, how are you? I'm fine. What's your name? I'm Shira. What are you here to do? I came to shop. You came to shop? Oh, that's huge. So, um, are you looking forward to having a good time at the mall? Yeah. For others, like this circle of friends, it is all about having fun. fun. We are here to shop. And celebrating Christmas here at the mall is beautiful. We thank God for giving us life and we are having so much fun. As the years progress, spending time at shopping malls like the Accra Mall seem to have come to stay. And I wonder which destination will be in vogue by the next holiday season. Zarina Amandish report for Joy News. And that's where we end the news tidbits on the show this morning. We have a lot more of news, and they have all been updated on various websites. We'll have to check on myjoyonline.com. We'll go to CTFM. We'll go to the Africa page of the BBC. We have, uh, I think, uh, about two or three papers in the studios. And uh, we'd want to check uh, their front pages and see what news they have. But we'll do all that up next. <laughs>